Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'll be showing you how to connect to a MySQL database using PHP. Now what this script is going to allow us to do is to create a connection between our PHP files from our site to our database. Now anytime you want to get information from a database or put information into it, you're going to need this script. So that makes it pretty important. So to get started we're going to create a new PHP file and then I'm going to delete all of the HTML out from the code view. Then I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm just going to save it as MySQL Connect in our htdocs folder, um, which if you've been paying attention to the last couple tutorials is the folder for XAMPP so that I can put this onto my local server. So I'm just going to overwrite that. And then I'm just going to start out with the opening PHP um, and closing PHP tags, which is um, an opening bracket, a question mark, PHP, hit enter a couple times, another question mark, and then a closing tag. So I'm just going to put some space in there with by hitting enter and then we're going to start with some variables. So the variables we're going to need are the database host, the, data, the database username, the database password, and the database name. So I'm just going to start by um, hitting the money sign which is the way that you signal a variable within PHP. So we're going to say money sign db underscore host. And then space equals space, a couple of quotes, and then a semicolon. And now I'm just going to select that and I'm going to paste it three more times. And now for the second one, we're going to change the word host to username. And then the third one, we're going to change to pass. And then the last one, we're going to change to name. All right, so now we need to actually put the corresponding um, things into the quotations. So the first thing, which is the host, um, it's going to be localhost for me because one, I'm offline and I'm using a private server, so it's going to be localhost. But also many um, web hosting servers, even online, will be localhost. If you try localhost and it doesn't work, then you need to probably check around your web hosting and see um, what the other alternative host name is. But for the most part, it's going to be localhost regardless of if it's online or offline. So um, for the username, um, if you've been following along, it's going to be root for XAMPP. That's the default super username. And then for pass, um, I set it up as test123. And then for the name, it was the, it, we're going to be uh, connecting to the database we created in the last tutorial. So I'm just going to say test underscore database because that just we're not actually going to be using the data because there's no data in it, but we can definitely connect to it if we have the name. So the next thing that we need to do is actually run the connection. Right now all we have is variables. So to start the connection we're going to put an at sign. We're going to say mysql underscore connect. Then an open parenthesis. Then we're going to put a couple of quotes, a comma, a couple of quotes, a comma, and then two more quotes, and then a closing parenthesis. Now inside of the first quotes we're going to put the variable database host. So the host comes first. We're going to paste that in. Then the next thing that we need to connect is the username. And then we're going to paste that into the second number of quotes, or the second uh, set of quotes. And then for the next thing we need is the pass. So this is basically um, how it looks if you were to set it up. You'd actually put these in there. But we set up variables because I think it's just easier to change these and then it changes it everywhere else within the connection. So I just think it's easier to look at in that sense. So now this should connect us to our database, but we want to set up some things um, to happen basically if it can't connect us so that it doesn't just, we can't figure out the problem. It'll actually tell us this is the problem. You don't have a database or um, the database connection just failed. So we're going to say or and then we're going to say die and then a space and then a parenthesis couple of quotes and then a closing parenthesis semicolon. So inside of the quotes we're going to say um, could not connect could not connect to MySQL because that's just the basic um, it failed thing. So we're going to say could not connect to MySQL. So that'll run if it can't connect. Now we may want to make it more specific so we can actually hit enter right after this and then we can have another one where we say at MySQL underscore select underscore DB and then an open parenthesis couple of quotes, close parenthesis, and then we're going to say space or die, and then open parenthesis, two quotes, close parenthesis, semicolon. Now in this one we're going to basically be selecting the database of the name, so we're going to be taking the name, which is test database, and if it can't find that we're going to want it to also fail as far as connecting to that database. So we're just going to say no database. 
or you can say no database of that name, but we'll just leave it as no database. So now if it doesn't, or if it does work, we're going to also want it to say something so that we know it works. Now, you wouldn't want this um, if you were actually using this code in your website, which you would be, um, but just for the purpose of showing that it actually works, we're going to type that out. So we're gonna say echo, two quotes and a semicolon. And inside echo, which you saw uh, two tutorials ago where I was echoing out some text, it, basically the echo function basically just displays text. Whatever's inside of there, it's going to display. If it's code, if it's text, it's just gonna put it out onto the screen. So we're going to say successful connection. All right, so basically, let me run you through this again. So it's connecting to the database by taking the host name, the username, and the password. And if it fails, it says that it couldn't connect. Now if it can connect, it's going to try and find the database name, which is right here. And if it can't find that, then it also fails because that database isn't even in there. So if it does connect, then we're going to be saying successful connection, and you're pretty much good to go by using that database from that point on in your PHP. So we're going to save this. So I'll just do control S, or you can go to file save. And now what we need to do is, if you're using XAMPP, I have it right here, um, you need to make sure that the top two are running. And since that's already going, I'm just going to open up Firefox. Then I'm going to go to localhost slash, and then we named it mysql underscore connect dot php. So I'll just hit enter. And it says successful connection. So that means that we have successfully connected to our database. So now what we're gonna do is actually change it up and we're gonna make it fail on purpose just so that we can test that uh, it wasn't just a fluke that this ran. So we're going to, let's just change the name of the database which doesn't exist. So we'll just say test database two. We'll save that, go back to Firefox, and then we'll refresh it. And then it says no database because it couldn't find the database in um, PHP my admin because it doesn't exist. So that, that part of the function is actually working correctly. So we'll just fix that and then we'll say um, something up here, let's say localhost2 instead, and which is going to cause this to fail and it should say could not connect to MySQL. So we're going to go to Firefox again, refresh, and could not connect to MySQL. So now we know that that part's working correctly. So that means that our whole script is working right and we can take this echo out and basically you just put this at the top of your document in PHP for your website, wherever you wanted to run things um, from uh, MySQL. And basically you just use an include file, which is one line of code and it would allow you to take and include this MySQL connect into your file, which would allow you to um, access your database with just one line of code and you wouldn't have to type out all this stuff every time. You, that's why we created it in a separate file so you can just include it in whatever you're doing and it will allow you to connect whenever you want. So um, we'll be showing those includes later on when we're um, working with other PHP files. But I just wanted to show you this because it's a really important step to have this file on your computer so that you can just link to it, um, change this up whenever you need to, to connect to whatever database you need. So I hope you guys learned something about uh, PHP, um, MySQL, and using databases. Um, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.